All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at initial value and zero or zeros. And uh, you can look at other videos for all the other properties of the functions. All right, let's take a look at what these are. Initial value is where the function crosses the y-axis. A lot of you probably know that as the y-intercept. And the zero or zeros is where the function crosses the x-axis, or also called the uh, x-intercept. And as would be uh, noted, we can only ever have one initial value. But again, it is possible that we have more than one uh, zero or zeros. It's also possible that we'd have a case where we had um, we had no initial value and or possibly no zero as well. well let's look at some look at some examples. So your initial value is where the function crosses the x-axis or, 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 or the y-axis. Pardon me, our y-intercept. So we can just take a look. Here's our y-axis. Where does it cross? Right here. And at that point in time, we just need to write down the value of y. So our initial value is 1. We don't need to worry about the x-coordinate because when it crosses the y-axis, our x-coordinate is always 0. All right, let's take a look at our example over here. Where does it cross the y-axis? Right here. And what's our value of y at that point? Again, we need to look at the scale. Every uh, block is worth 2,000. So this would be negative 2,000, negative 4,000. And I won't write it out, but our initial value here is negative 4,000. So we've got another example. Again, we'll notice that this graph actually exists to the left, but where it crosses the y-axis is right here. And at this point, it's actually at the origin. x is 0 and y is 0. So our initial value here is 0. And if we look at the last one, once again, it crosses right here. And our initial value there is 1. Piece of cake. Let's look at the next. So we'll take a look at our 0. Again, it is possible we have more than one 0. And this is where the function crosses the x-axis or the x-intercept. So here is our x-axis. Where does it cross? Right there. Now, this isn't exactly on a whole number. So we maybe have to estimate this. If this is 0, this would be negative 1. I'm going to say negative 1.4. You might be off by a little bit on that. And that's OK, because we just have to estimate for this one. Take a look at our next one. Where does this one cross the x-axis? Well, it actually crosses three times. Once here, once here, and once here. Now we got to take a look at our scale. If each block is 10, this would be 10. This would be pretty close to 20, 30. This would be about 40, 50, and this would be 60. And again, they might be off by a little bit. If you felt they were, you might want to um, do a, you just uh, estimate these values. But for a demonstration here, we'll see a zero, or in this case, zeros. And we only need to say the value of x where it crosses the x-axis, because every time it crosses, our value of y is zero. So we don't need to write that down. So our zeros are 20, 40, and 60. Take a look at another example. This one crosses twice, right here and right here. So our zeros are zero and two. Again, just for focusing on the x-coordinates. And our last one has one zero right there at one. And there you go. Look at uh, other videos for the other properties of a function. Bye-bye.